actually we've got some other bits of news i want to pop on here before where is it oh yeah this is the one so we got this so you remember brendan said brendan said he's going on tour right which is fucking hilarious for me as i still find this stuff happening in comedy really funny this stuff right this whole like i'm going on a summer tour where you're going to one venue technically that can't be a tour personally in my opinion it can't be if it's one location um that's you know within an hour's drive from where you live that technically can't be a tour at least if it's two locations on the way there maybe you can say it's a tour um but one location is but anyway all comedians do it for some reason it's a tour cool but um i guess the david lucas thing got knocked on the head no more david lucas now brendan is bringing some guy called nikki paris the name sounds a bit you know rule rule paul's drag racy or maybe um van der pump's Rawley, right it's one of the two it falls on one of the two spectrums of sass either it's van der pump's rule type of type of person or it's a rule paul's drag race type of person nikki paris but allegedly some person called nikki paris is i'm so hyped to join brendan shaw tonight through saturday night at the brand new laugh factory in covenia as brendan would say so who the fuck is nikki paris you say i don't know who nikki paris is either so i decided to go to youtube and type in nikki paris stand up and the first thing that came up was this clip nikki paris man on the street so we're going to watch who this Nikki Paris is because Nikki Paris has now taken the spot of David Lucas because Brendan trying to make it seem like David Lucas is going to be opening for him at this place. But now Nikki Paris is. So I want to see how good or how bad Nikki Paris is compared to Brendan. I'm really curious to see what standard of comedy this is. But I want to see what level of sass this is. I'm already getting some sass on the thumbnail here and maybe with the button-up shirt here and the... Uh, Maybe there's a cravat here, but let's see. Let's see what the sass is saying about Nikki Paris. Let's not talk about views, okay? Views are not important when it comes to comedy because if someone's funny and they've got two views, I'm happy to watch their, their content. I just want to hear fucking funny. I don't care about whether or not it's views. So let's just see. Is this Nikki Paris person funny? Yay or nay? Or no? That's better, right? Let's just put this in a poll. Let's put this in a poll. Let's, let's put this. Let's see if you guys can be objective is nikki paris barnier than brendan schwab please okay be honest as well you know be open to opening your mind up and seeing if you're wrong and stuff let's see what you guys think watch this with an objective eye put all your preconceptions to one side and let's just watch nikki paris do what he does best man on the street I'm comedian Nikki Paris, and I'm on the streets of Santa Monica, where God only knows what's happening here. And I'm talking to the people roaming around about love, sex, quarantine, and what position they do best. Who wants to get interviewed about sex during the pandemic? You seem very relaxed, so I'm assuming you just had sex about 10 seconds ago? Is that 30 minutes. 30 minutes ago. What's COVID when you have gonorrhea? Exactly. Talk to me. Are you single? I am so single. We cannot trust any man in this entire world because all they do is lie. No, but my boyfriend would love if I love kissed a girl. Would you like to kiss a girl for the first time on camera? Are you looking for love right now? Are you looking to find maybe a bearded lady at the circus? Hey, if she's rich, why not? When do you think you'll be ready to do anal again? When someone wants to buy me a house. When do you think people will be comfortable again doing anal after the pandemic? Maybe they never stop. <laughs> they're, all, they're always comfortable. We've always been comfortable doing anal. So yeah, it's always anal sex. How many people would you say you fucked during the, the pandemic? I would say about 30. I'd say like seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Brendan Shaw level of lies. Man. Honestly, I love this. It's funny because when you were younger, right? When you were like, when you were like under the age of 16, these kind of guys, like you believe them when you, I don't know why. I, and maybe it's just me. I'm just susceptible to lies. It's funny that I don't get scammed more often. I should probably get scammed more than I sh than I do. People should scam me way more often because I'm really gullible, really naive. Because I used to believe all this shit. Oh yeah, I did this to her. I did that. Smash it. Like I used to be the guy like sitting there. Like, really? Tell me more. Tell me more. Like, <laughs> just captivated. Like really? What 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 what, what, what she smell like? You saw her bare breast. 
wow you know <laughs> i'd be that kind of guy i'd be so gullible i swear to god i'd be so gullible I swear, like oh god past like year or so why do you think it was so low for you i mean you know i don't like to like one and done really i kind of like You're emotional i like to attach myself physically or emotionally what do you both yeah. No, both yeah female orgasm is not needed for reproduction so it does not matter well, ladies, you know who to stay away from at the bars. I'm gonna wind up in prison. What do you think is the secret to finding love after the quarantine? Balls to the wall. Balls to the wall. What would you say is the secret to finding love during the pandemic? Have you put your balls on the wall previously? Yes, a few hours ago. Thank you, thank you. Now, was there something your partner did in the pandemic that you were like, I would love to hit you with a nice pick? Ah, uh, we're kind of dealing with like an open relationship so i'll leave it at that how many people have you guys fucked during the pandemic together didn't i just tell you a girl never tell 17. <laughs> what are you two doing in the bedroom to spice it up during this time honestly fisting no uh, no, no not yet, not yet. <laughs> you know go grab one of them butt plugs go get i think um what you call it um seven days said the right thing here this guy has no jokes but he's still funny than brendan that's the thing he's not my type of comedy but I can understand why some people would find him funny. He's at least got a little bit of charisma about him. He has some level of comedic timing, right? Whatever. It's not for me, personally. I don't find this funny at all. I don't really find Man on the Street stuff funny anyway. Overall, it's a bit, you know, whatever. It's a bit overdone and played out. But he's still, I think, probably able to put together an actual bit. We're actually going to watch his stand-up material later after this. But he seems like a funnier person. And one of them dick, them cock rings that vibrate, them, crazy. Or if she got birth control, raw dog that hoe. I love that you're so romantic. I'm very romantic. No, he is I, very romantic, I, actually, yeah. he's very romantic. You know, I need a mop. Are you into bushes? Do you like a little hair? When you see that, because it's very organic, you want to actually, um, you want to actually. The purpose of it, of course, is to leave a scent, and you can know where. Vaginal hair is really like a flavor saver. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. You guys met during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Absolutely. Yes. Where did you meet him? At, at, at a urgent care? Get, getting tested? Oh, an issue. An issue. No, no, no. A little burning. Does he look a little bit like big, like, does he look a little bit like Brendan's brother? Like Jay? No? Or am I, or am I being a little bit crazy here? Doesn't he look a little bit like Jay? There's something about him. Maybe it's just the dark hair in the fucking face, but he looks a little bit like Jay. Tiny bit maybe it's very rare that you see people in relationships now and I find it inspiring honestly I think people need to be transparent communicate about everything even the uncomfortable stuff like what happens if you shit a little when it <laughs> you, crazy. you might be crazy you might be a little bit crazy today I spoke to a lot of people and forget about a COVID vaccine after speaking to some of these people I think I need a vaccine of penicillin but I've learned so much about people's sex lives, what got them going, and how they feel about getting back out there and getting back on the horse. Who booked this person for Brendan? Do you think Brendan saw this content himself? Was it the Comedy Store, Laugh Factory, La Jolla, what, sorry, um, Covina, they recommended him to him? This is an interesting one. How the fuck did he get him involved? Okay, let's see his stand-up material. This is from 11 months ago. So, okay, so he loves he loves talking about sex, doesn't he? Sex dungeons. Okay, okay, cool. Let's let's see this one. Let's see if he's funnier here. Nikki Paris crowd work sex dungeons. Let's see this. Guys, keep the masks on when you finger each other. Or so. <laughs> How did you girls meet online? What was the opening line that she said? Tell us the story. She sat on my face. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Monkey pox started. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally. Did you go to an Applebee's first? Did you just. Oh, is this you from Hinge? Put your on my nostrils. Is that. Where did you sit on your face for the first time? A dungeon. <laughs> so you sat on her face in a dungeon. Very hunchback of Notre Dame in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Try topping that story. You're boring. You said love is what keeps us together. Was anyone else hoping he would say anal beats or something like that? I'm not gonna lie, I think Brendan Schultz funnier. Kill me, but I think Brendan Schultz funny, I'm not gonna lie. Fucking hell, mate. These guys get paid to do this shit. God almighty. Okay, next one. Connecting to strangers. 
Fuck me, Nikki Paris. Come on, brother. Down from Staten Island, like, oh my god, do you do heroin? I'm like, you think I'm skinny enough to do heroin? Thank you so much. This guy said bing bong, what are you, a fucking robot? What's the deal with this guy? And the US, uh, what did you just get off of work at Models? Where the fuck did you just come from? Sir, you look like Rocky with diabetes. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> I love that laugh, and I love you in Hocus Pocus. Anyway, I... Thank you, sir. I'm gay. One thing for sure, if the next episode back, like, what's the next I think they record on Tuesdays, right? The T-Fat K. The next T-Fat K that comes out, if you hear Brendan being overly ramping up the gay humour ramping up the sexual jokes on T-Fat K, you'll know he spent a lot of time with Nikki Paris over the weekend at Covina. If you, if you watch, because, you know, Brendan's a fucking human parrot, right? So if you hear him start saying loads of really gay jokes, really ramping up the sexual humour on T-Fat K, you know he spent a lot of time with him. And you maybe even recognise some jokes that he might have heard from him over the weekend. Watch, just watch. I know it's going to happen. Okay. Um, another one here 1. 1.2 thousand views from seven months ago NYC Marathon put your medals away let's see what this is about who ran in the marathon or walked in the marathon or walked today with the medal on you know who you are do you see these people what? thank you for wearing the race is over okay you did a great job the marathon there is no need it is now Tuesday Monday whatever day it is let us see you with the cheesecake factory bag let us Marathon or that was decent that, that might have been my favorite bit i don't get me i didn't laugh you know i don't know i laughed in my head but that might have been my favorite bit so far this nyc marathon bit was pretty decent maybe i don't know <laughs> what's the poll saying so far <laughs> what's the poll saying <laughs> is nikki paris funnier than brendan 42 percent said yes 33 percent said no so far 24 xj <laughs> You don't want to be involved. I don't know. This <laughs> this NYC marathon thing was okay, but God almighty, man. This is why I, this is why sometimes I can understand why Brennan's so arrogant. I get it, man. Because if this guy's meant to be opening for him, this guy's meant to be like lower on a totem pole than him. I get why. I get why people like have the arrogance that they have about their comedy material because by and large, there must be so much shit out there. There must be so many people who are legitimately wasting their time. Like, think of the grown adults who are going to do open mics and stuff, writing material, wasting their time, wasting their money in fucking gas, whatever, paying for babysitters to go and do material somewhere, and they're garbage. You know? They're garbage. It must be so common. Like, they're horrible at what they do. So I understand why Brennan's a little bit arrogant about how he does it, because you know, at least he has some evidence to show that he's good because he had a special, you know, he's terrible, don't get me wrong, but he had a special out there and stuff. Yeah, big up Abbe Martis, appreciate you. Thank you for the constant entertainment at work. Yeah, I appreciate you. That's my, that's always my goal. I appreciate you for tuning in. My goal is always to be the number one in the background live stream to listen to when you're at work because that's what i would have loved if i when i was working fucking in warehouses and at retail and stuff have something that i can listen to in one ear and just be doing my work and be continuing i love that shit so big up abby martins i appreciate you mate that is the biggest compliment i could receive um but yeah okay another one comedian gets rejected from a by a prostitute how where did brendan find this guy or did i think the laugh actually gave it to him because i think he might be Laugh Factory um, branded or something, right? Where do they find this person? I love performing here. I, I love the Tropicana. Um, the last time I was here, a prostitute tried to pick me up in the pool here. She was going up to all the men. She got to me. She's like, what are you looking for? I'm like, someone with a dick. <laughs> and she swam away and I never saw her again. I was about to compliment her mullet and C-section scar. I was ready. I love performing here. What? So what's the joke? That it was a prostitute and that she didn't know he was gay. What was the joke? I don't, I don't get it. That she had a mullet. Huh?
why are people in the audience laughing? Do you think they're laughing because they're drinking or something? Why are they laughing at that? Or is it because of the way he's saying... You know what he does similar to Brendan? He does a thing similar to Brendan where he tries to say things in a funny way. Right? Like, that's how he does his comedy. Like, saying things in a funny, comedic way, pulling a face or, you know, acting effeminate. That is meant to be the funny thing as opposed to just being a funny joke. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the joke there. I don't know what the punchline is that one. She had a mullet and a C-section. Okay. Um... Stuck under a bridge for hours. For four hours. Okay, let's see this one. This is a, a minute long, nearly. Let's see this bit. I'm going to die. I'm in a very bad mood today because last night I got stuck. I was trapped on a highway for four hours. Just like I tried to jump off a bridge last night. And I was underneath the bridge for four hours. Four hours there wasn't a breeze to help make the decision. There wasn't a north wind coming in from I don't, I don't know where. I should take these off their face. Sometimes <laughs> Sometimes I smoke weed and I don't want people to see my eyes, so I think I'm like Clark Kent's lesbian sister. Just like, okay. But if he didn't kill himself, that's obviously horrible. But if he didn't kill himself, and he got down, what is he doing today? Because my day was ruined. If I find out he's a Denny's getting a grand slam, no, I want to talk to the LAPD. And I'm like, am I a bad person? You know, I want to like talk to the person on the bridge. And I have a very annoying voice. So I'm like, baby, that's not a little help. I'm going to have to start doing stand-up. If this guy's getting paid to do this shit full-time, if he pays his fucking rent and his car note doing stand-up this bad, I'm going to have to start writing some jokes. He said when he puts his glasses on, he feels like Clark Kent's lesbian cousin, Giselle Kent. Que cosa? What the fuck's that meant to mean? How is that? What's the, what's the funny bit in that? Clark Kent's lesbian cousin, Giselle. What? Because lesbians wear glasses. Like I don't, I don't even understand why that's funny. How is that meant to be funny? <laughs> like, huh? Yo, Brendan, Brendan's funnier than this guy. I don't care what you guys say in the chat. Brendan's funnier than this guy. This dude is this fuck. This dude fucking stinks. Comedian's mom wants him to bag bitches. Okay, I'm gonna. This is the last one. I'm gonna move on. I don't want to fucking bore you guys to death with this guy, but Nikki Paris, man, you're not doing yourself any favors, bro. I think Bapa might be better than you. Came out, my mom came into my room hysterical crying, and she's like, Nicholas, don't you think you'd be trying being with girls for me? <laughs> like, can you imagine me after 17 lemon drop martinis about to plow some? <laughs> like, do you really want to do this? I'm like, no, but my mom really wants me to. No, come on, Teju, man. Papa's definitely better than this. Brendan's better than this. Come on, man. Brendan's better. Brendan's fucking better than this. I don't care. Brendan's fucking better than this guy. Brendan should stand up. You guys are putting Brendan's... Your brother muddying Brendan's name. Brendan's better than Nicky Paris. I know I sound like a fucking psycho for saying this. I know it. Don't worry. Um, is, is any of these, has, has he got any stand-up clips we can just check out? Or is it all just Gringo Pappy shit? Uh... Is there no clips of his? Yeah, see, there's clips, right? Um, cool. There we go. Look, look. He's funnier. Watch. Look at this one. This, look at this one. This is the best of Brendan Shaw. Let's see, let's see this one. Volume one. World star! <laughs> the fucking fiesta! <laughs> cabron, cabron, look, cabron, cabron. Cabron, cabron, cabron. Puto, puto. <laughs> <laughs> Puto, talk shit to me in Spanish. I struggle with English at times. <laughs> what? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. Huevos <laughs> Sancho. <laughs> Carne asada. Pico de gallo. Great chili. Ah. Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. I need a fucking tater tot once a week. Maybe Brenda's not trying to shit his pants tonight. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. <laughs> I don't care he's better Brendan's better Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese Brendan's better, I don't care what you guys say Brendan's shop is better Oh, bean cheese, bean cheese 
<laughs> imagine going to a comedy. Imagine how much is that Laugh Factory place anyway? Laugh Factory Covina. How much is that fucking shit, man? Because some of you people out there. Imagine, right? Going to the fucking Laugh Factory Covina and paying $30 to see Brendan being opened by fucking Nikki Paris. Can you imagine how horrible that must be of an experience? $30 of your own hard-earned money to go see Brendan Schaub with Nikki fucking Paris. No, thank you. Let's scroll down here. Let's see. Look, look at that lineup. Who the fuck are these people? Jerry Garcia, Rene Vaca, Jamie Kennedy, oh, Brendan's guy, Jeff Dye. The only guy here who's worth the money would be Adam Ray. I'll definitely fucking, you know, pay money to see Adam. Also, why is Adam Ray's fucking tickets $5 cheaper and he's like 10 times funnier? Please, someone tell me how that makes sense. How can he be $25, but Brendan's ticket start at 30? How does that make sense? How? Adam Ray's like a million times funnier than fucking Brendan. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Yo. $30 to see this guy perform with Nikki Paris opening. <laughs> can you imagine? Let's see the tickets here. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this. Everything's available. Forty dollars for a VIP ticket. What does VIP even get you? Get to, what do you do? You get to sit next nearer to the fucking audience. What does that get you? Friday tickets. Let's see. Oh my god. Yo, big up fizzy water. Appreciate the super chat, my friend. I'm paying five bucks for that thing's <laughs> coffin. <laughs> yeah, don't lie though. Don't lie. Don't you. D Big up fizzy water, but don't lie. Brendan's better though. Come on, that little clip I showed you of his gringo papi shit, that stuff's better. Don't lie. You know it's better. You know it. Oh my God, man. You fucking know it. I, f I, I know you do. That's fucking awesome. What, is it, what, what does this VIP tickets give you? Oh, VIP booths. $50. Can you imagine spending $50 on these freaks? 50 god almighty man that is insane you have to be a real fan a real fucking fan to spend fucking 50 dollars on these freaks 50 dollars okay one day sold out at least one tier 9 30 golden circle is sold out but the rest of them are all available every ticket available god almighty mate fucking hell that's brutal but yeah um if you're if you're eager to check him out then you know where to check out his stuff uh there is nikki paris's twitter and instagram you can follow him if you want to at his his twitter is at nikki paris bitch nice um so yeah him and brendan together lovely lovely jubbly let's see how that rolls and we'll hear brendan's review on on the next episode of t fat k either he'll trash him or pretend like it was a great experience so we'll wait and see what happens there we have to wait and see what happens there 